I mean, I'm going to continue the discussion that my colleague has started on case studies. But before I do that, I just want to acknowledge that a lot of this work was done not just by myself, but with students from the University of Guelph, Laura Fellowfield, Nicole Benna, and Tristan Wiley. Thank you for all the support you've done. We did extensive interviews with users of the standards I will be talking about and also with members of the technical committee. And in our research, we're reflecting really why. How is it that standards enable the sustainable development goals? In webinar number one, we went a little bit more into details on how it works, but essentially there are two big reasons. One is to signal to stakeholders that you're doing something that makes a difference. The sustainable development goals or the SDGs are really important, as we all know. And secondly, to embed behavior into the organization. So looking at standards is useful, but it's useful not just for the standard writers, but also for you as organizations. It allows you to benchmark your activities, to learn from other activities, to institutionalize behavior that's really important, and to really visualize how reality happens. There was a lot of interviewing, as my colleague has said, and as a result of that, I'm going to focus on two uh, of the many standards that we looked at. One of them is CSA W218, the bio design of bioretention systems. For those of you who are in the construction trade, who are involved uh, in buildings and retention, you know a little bit about the standard. But really, if we look at it, very importantly, you have that question. Who cares and why? And the answer is there are linkages directly to the sustainable development goals. As Michael Leering described, there are 17 goals. So out of those 17 goals, this particular standard on bioretention really focuses on aspects of three goals, that of clean water and sanitation, industry innovation and infrastructure, and climate action. But just saying that it addresses it doesn't quite answer how it does it. We know that we're signaling to stakeholders. We know we're trying to embed a way of doing things into the organization. But very specifically, you can drill down to what does the targets, what do the targets define the goal to be for SDG 6? clean water and sanitation, I will read it from my screen. By 2030, improve water quality by reducing pollution, eliminating dumping, minimizing the release of hazardous chemicals. So there are very specific targets that define SDG 6. And for the standard to actually do something for the goal, you should be able to address a target. So I've exerted one little section from the actual standard that says, the standards for green infrastructure to support flood mitigation and surface water protection, which directly links to the target, target 6.3. There is a direct link, there's an impact, and this is recognized as we investigate the mapping, but also as we look at what the impact is on the earth. If you can't control your water quality or the climate, ultimately you have no globe to think of. So what we learned from talking to the users and developers of the standard are really a few important lessons. One, we need to have more knowledge about what the sustainable development goal means within the organization and for all the stakeholders, but also an effort that we're doing now through knowledge modelization is to actually learn about the linkages. And then you also have to leverage off existing conditions. In this case, we're very concerned about water in Canada, very concerned about the impact of climate. So we really have to see how the standards leverages that into an action that relates back to the SDG. And you're either consciously ad adopting the SDG and then telling within the organization how you're going to implement the SDG or else you're going to adopt it from the grounds up. You're actually going to work towards making sure that the standard 
forms part of what you do and therefore actually makes an impact. The other standard that I thought was also very interesting among all the other ones that we were looking at and my, my colleague talked about is the one that relates back to community drainage planning design and maintenance in northern communities. It's very interesting because it's embedded into what the culture of Nunavut, what the Inuk actually think about with respect to sustainability. It's very important to be conscious that, in fact, this standard has linkages to multiple sustainable development goals. All the way out of the 17, we found at least five. The important ones, of course, are relating to clean water and climate action. But then, very importantly, it relates back to infrastructure, SDG 11, and to responsible consumption production, and of course, to industry. All of those are interlinked. And with this graphic, I'm hoping that you can see the interlinkages. Once again, two things that you can do as an organization. You're signaling that, in fact, we are making a difference to the SDGs, with the SDGs, with the use of standards. And secondly, you're embedding behavior into an organization. Two very important actions. In this case, we interviewed two sets of stakeholders. One was civil organizations, engineering organizations, people who recognize that they are building within a very fragile environment, that in fact, by following the standards, you're aligning with corporate objectives of sustainability, of building without impacting adversely your environment and the climate and everything that's going on around it. But also knowing that sometimes the economics don't justify certain sustainable behavior, but using the standards forces you, helps you modify that behavior. So in fact, you are addressing the SDG. Most importantly, perhaps, is from the actual government, the governance side of Nunavut. We interviewed members of the government there. And one of the most salient quotes that we could find was from an individual who said, in our particular government division, we want our communities to be sustainable. This is embedded in the culture. We want them to still be there in 100 years. And by actually implementing the standard, you go back to the SDG and you're supporting it. Very specifically, you go down from the 17 SDGs, you can go down to 169 targets, and you actually narrow down to how you impact those individual targets. Here, we looked at two specific targets, one dealing with water, 6.B.1, and one dealing with infrastructure, 9.4. In both cases, there was a linkage and essentially a synchronicity between the standard and the SDG. I've exerted another little quotation from the standard, increase the capacity of communities and individuals to prepare and implement effective community drainage plans goes back to infrastructure and also goes back to the aspect of 6.1, 6.B.1 with respect to water and sanitation. Both very important. So this is kind of illustrating to you, I think, that who really cares to address that triple bottom line? You hear all these buzzwords, triple bottom line, planet, profit, people, but in fact, it goes back to making sure that you care about the environment, E, you care about the social or societal making a difference, S, and you do care about the governance that leads to an economic impact. That leads to the ESGs that many of you are concerned about. But also, from the sustainable viewpoint, the triple bottom line, and from the SDG viewpoint, making sure that you do make a difference. Once again, the lessons learned, same thing. More knowledge about the SDG is important among all stakeholders. People need to know about how, in fact, standards do make a, a good linkage with the SDGs. Work off the fact that we are very culturally sensitive to everything that's going on around us in the day of reconciliation like today. We recognize that we are part of a broader human family and we are consciously signaling, essentially, top-down compliance or bottoms-up compliance. Either way, we are addressing what the SDG means. And that's why case studies are useful. They 
institutionalized behavior. They make sure that you're following what's done best out there. And it also gives us a way to visualize, to dream and to also visualize what the reality is of an SDG and a standard, how the two fit together.